Let's face it, you are here because of one of the following reasons. You either wanna tell me that I am wrong and that blending is obviously important, or you have seen a cool miniature in the thumbnail and you wanna see me paint it. Which... I don't blame you. Or you are curious and you wanna know what the hell am I talking about? So fasten your seatbelts boys and girls because today I'm gonna tell you that I made five videos on blending that are absolutely useless. Well, not not really, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So how did I come to a conclusion that you and I should stop obsessing over blending and smoothness? As with all great stories, this one starts on Facebook. On August 4th, I have posted this work in progress picture of my Scarlet Witch miniature to a certain group. Now people really liked it, and that made me happy. Except there was one comment that made me rethink everything. Usually I don't think about comments too much, but this one really stuck with me. I mean look, here I am talking about it one month later. And it's not like it made me upset, it made me think about all those countless hours I spent on making my miniatures smooth. For example, let's look at these two. I am 100% sure that I spent more than 30 hours on each of these, and it wouldn't surprise me if it was even more than 40. And this one is not even based yet. And sure, if you are painting for a competition, this is not even that much. But these are not competition pieces. Out of that entire time that I painted this miniature, majority is spent on blending and fixing little mistakes. At that point, when you are spending entire work week just to have perfectly smooth blends, you might be asking, is it worth it? Well... I don't fucking know, you tell me. If you add on top of that another display piece, we are quickly approaching 100 hours, and that is actually a good time to finish entire army. And yeah, it's not gonna look as good as the display pieces, but you get the point. So right now, instead of chasing smoothness, we are gonna look at how to paint something well without dedicating our precious time to blending. For that, I will use this goblin miniature that is from today's sponsor, MV Creative. You might already know about MV Creative because it's a spin-off of Terrible Kid Stuff. Their current Kickstarter campaign called Green Skull Castle Heroes and Legends feature awesome goblin miniatures just like these ones. These models have been designed for painters, collectors, as well as gamers. I have personally assembled all the miniatures that MV Creative sent me and I just love them. Additionally, there are basically no mold lines and they just look so cute. Look at this guy and his two little voodoo dolls. Or this guy who looks kinda like a dwarf. And don't forget about ink. Honestly, these have been sculpted so well, it's a pleasure to paint them. So if you find them as awesome as I do, definitely check out their Kickstarter. Thank you MV Creative for sponsoring this video. So now to paint this little guy, I want to share with you my approach for the best results without blending. First, it's pretty clear that I'm not gonna use any glazing. A glaze is essentially a really, really thin layer of paint, and therefore it takes a lot of time to paint something or to correct mistakes with it. However, I can use a bit of feathering, because it's more of a secondary blending method rather than a precision tool, and it doesn't take too much time. When feathering, you are pretty much just spreading your layer to make softer transition. It's not super smooth, but fast. Stippling will be my friend for this hammer and leather, and for the rest, I am gonna use standard layering approach. When I talk about layering, it can actually mean many things. If you remember this diagram, you can see that a layer has equal amount of water or medium and paint. This can be different depending depending on the paint itself, but for the most part, it should work. But here, we are not gonna use equal amount of water and paint, rather, we will use consistency that is something between a glaze and a layer. That way, you can actually build up layers without going back to blend them. Getting the right ratio with different paints can be difficult, because you cannot go too light or you will lose coverage and opacity. On the other hand, if you don't have enough water, there will be too hard of a separation. Mastering the right ratio of paint and water so you don't have to come back and fix any hard transitions is difficult, but worth it. If you don't know about Angel Giraldez or Sergio Calvo, these are pro painters that have mastered this layering approach. And most likely you won't see them using too much glazing to fix anything. So once this goblin is base coated, it's time to start building up some volume. I am using lighter gray to paint the exposed side of it. This can certainly take more than one layer, because it might need to be even lighter, but you will always find this out once it's dry. You can also see that I'm trying to spread the paint with this sort of feathering motion so there is no hard separation between lighter and darker layers. However, I will still leave it like this, even if it's not super smooth, so we save ourselves some time. As I progress, I go for lighter gray and cover even smaller surface. It's important to use very little amount of paint, so you can feather it properly, but not too far. That way you will have quite a smooth finish, because there is a mid-tone under this new layer, 
texture that we applied earlier. Of course, the more layers you apply like this, the smoother the gradient you end up with. But for this stone hammer, we don't need too many. Since I wanted to tint this hammer with greenish blue, I applied a light coat over that. To make it more weathered and used, I stippled multiple colors here and there before highlighting the edges with the same stippling motion. So without spending too much time on this hammer, we got some really nice result. Alternative to this layering approach is to go for the same colors and build the entirety of the reflections using stippling. But we also have to look at softer surface that isn't as crude. All the hair and green skin will serve as well for this purpose. Potentially you could go for stippling, but our soft layering approach will be much, much better. As always, I am starting with really dark green, almost blue green, and I am building everything from there. This time we have to use many more layers. While you can get away with like two to three layers for the stone hammer, on skin tones it's better to use four to five, or even more. This might sound like a lot, but if you simply apply it, feather it just a tiny bit, it's really fast anyway. When you are trying to avoid going back to blend everything, it's important to keep all the layers close to each other on the color wheel. You can do this by starting with green like this and adding more and more of a certain paint. That way, each additional layer is similar to the one underneath, yet it will be lighter. For goblins, I really like this sort of green, yellowish, desaturated skin tone, so I am adding more of that. You really don't need to buy 10 different paints for any skin tone, usually like 4 is enough. Note how every sequential layer covers less and less surface. Once again, I remind you to use very small amount of paint as you go further and feather it right away. Another thing to note is the reflection on this forehead. Usually the last layer will cover majority of the entire surface and the other layers are there to soften the transition. In this case, this is true as well, and I'm concentrating the center of the reflection here. On the other hand, his temples are gonna be really dark, so it's more readable. Remember that it's contrast that's important on your miniatures, not smoothness, and having a clear difference in shades and highlights makes your work way better. For the same reason, we as miniature painters tend to over-exaggerate things, so that is definitely the way to go. By focusing on contrast instead of blending, you are able to paint something that is very interesting, but at the same time you don't spend eternity painting it. On the skin, this contrast is created by difference of light and dark parts, but other than that you can create contrast by using different hues. That is also one of the reasons why I used this green-blue color on the hammer. By adding more information and texture to any surface, that part is gonna look really good even without smoothness. By focusing on contrast in values, meaning darkness and lightness, you can create an illusion of smoothness anyway. Even though the hair is black right now, we will paint some reflections by building up all the way to almost white. It might not seem like it, but this layer is quite dark but against pure black, it looks lighter than it is. This hard separation between the gray and the black might bother you right now, but once we apply lighter and lighter gray over that, it doesn't look all that bad. By increasing contrast, your eyes will sort of focus on the reflection and the overall effect. Of course, it might be a good idea to feather every layer a little bit, but don't stress over it. You are saving time, getting great results, and that's what matters. I am not trying to say that now you should stop blending altogether. No, no, no. But if you are already able to get a very good and smooth result, focusing on smoothness might be more of a grind rather than enjoyment. There will be times where you want or need to paint that perfect gradient because maybe you want to compete, but if you are a casual hobbyist and you don't have tens of hours to spend on blending two layers, just don't do it. After watching this video, you should now be able to get good results without burning through your precious time. However, if you are not able to get smooth results just yet and you wanna, you can check my video on stippling, which is super fast and easy, or glazing, which is so, so smooth. And of course, see you there, okay?